Hi, welcome to my GP Cloud. We're going through accounts receivable at this time. We're going to enter in a customer, enter in an invoice, uh, a receivables invoice. We'll enter in a cash receipt, and then we'll look at the how to apply a cash receipt. So we're going to start off by going to our sales area page, and from here I'm going to go to cards, customer, and this pulls up the customer maintenance window. I'm going to enter in a customer ID. I'll use myself and from there I'm gonna leave this from uh, you can hit it on hold or you can make it inactive I'm gonna leave those as such and I'll put my name in here once again in the class ID I'm gonna choose a class that has already been in the system I will use the USA ILMO class and if you just want to see the default things that are entered in for this uh, class. The credit limit is set to a $20,000 maximum amount. You could change it to unlimited. And then there's a few other things that are listed there on the class. Now back to the customer maintenance window. I'm going to put in the address ID as primary. And as you see, the payment terms have been defaulted in there. If you want to see what the payment terms looks like, net days of 30. You can do 210 net 30 uh, all through this payment term setup window. We'll leave it as such. If you want to go to the accounts window, these accounts have been pre-populated because we chose that class ID as long as well as all of the other options here as well. They've been pre-populated because we identified this customer as part of this class. And I choose save. And that customer is now in the system for us to enter in a transaction against them. Now we're going to go under the transaction window. We'll go over to transaction entry. Now the difference between transaction entry and sales transaction entry is this is the sales transaction entry allows you to have line items on your invoices. So if you wanted to sell individual line items and put those on an invoice, that's what you'd use. For a transaction entry, we will enter in an invoice that has basically just a uh, one amount that is listed on the invoice. And I'm going to choose my customer ID, Doug. Has pulls up all my information here, and I'm going to sell myself $100 worth of products. Now, if you go to the distribution window here, you'll see that this dis all the distributions are allocated here accordingly. And because we set uh, the customer up as a tax. Uh, appropriate uh, in that ca class ID these are all defaulting from those those accounts you could come in here and apply a check against this if you want to do this in one step so you didn't you don't want to if you get an invoice from a customer and you want to enter in the transaction and the and the payment amount at the same time you can enter that in there as well I'm gonna hit save uh, actually I'm gonna hit post here and post that transaction and when I close off of this area it's going to print out my posting reports and this shows me the posting journal at where everything was posted to now that I've entered the customer and entered a transaction for that customer I'm going to go under the cash receipts window and this is where I can enter a cash receipt for this customer and I'll choose Doug and I'm going to choose an amount of fifty dollars remember I chose a hundred dollars to put in that in that voucher but here I've entered in a cash payment of $50 and then I hit apply. This shows me that there is a $107 transaction out there. I'm applying $50 to that transaction amount and it shows an amount remaining of $57. And as I click OK, just wanted to show you the distributions to this as well. It debits the cash account so it means that we receive money from, from our customer and it's decreasing our receivables account. And as I hit post, that has applied a transaction to there. And if I hit the X button, it'll show me the posting report. And as you see, that shows that this was this payment was made and where it was applied to. I've gone back in and put in another cash receipt of $57 to be the offset to that last transaction. And if I go under Apply Sales Documents, I'm going to pull up that. Doug customer and if I look at the magnifying glass here we see that there's a $57 transaction here that was unapplied let me pull that up again so you can see that amount remaining is $57 and as I do that I'm able to come in and apply this $57 
to the remaining amount on this sales transaction. Now there is zero amount remaining. And as I click OK, that will apply the sales document so it is no longer outstanding. If I may make a mistake along the way, I can go to Posted Transactions. And this is only for receivables. Sales order processing doesn't have this, this option. But I'm going to put in my customer ID. And I'm going to choose my magnifying glass next to the number. And I'm going to choose a payment here. And I could actually go, go in and void out this payment. You can change the void and posting dates to the appropriate uh, date. And then as soon as I hit void, it will void out this payment. Now I'm going to go under the cards summary window. And I'm going to cho choose my customer ID. And you see now there is a $57 uh, amount outstanding. If I click on amount, it will show me the transactions that were in there. This little asterisk here means that this was a voided transaction. And this sales document, if I wanted to drill down there just a little bit further, you can see that this was a uh, $107 uh, here. And if I hit apply, you can see which documents are applied against that. So this only has that $50 transaction applied because I voided out that other $57 transaction. The last thing to round this all up is I'm going to go and do a trial balance report so we can take a look at this transaction. I'm going to choose the age trial balance with options. I'll choose new and I'm going to type in the type of report I want. I'm going to leave it in detail. I'm going to put a customer ID as Doug. I'll insert that as a restriction. I'm going to send this to the screen instead of the printer. Save a few trees there. And then I'm going to leave this in detail. I'll hit print. And this will do out my trial balance report. And it shows a $107 transaction with a $50 applied, leaving $57. Now you can do that without a restriction to get your full receivables uh, amount for the period. And I recommend you do that on a monthly basis, tying out this receivables amount to your GL. So in summary, we created customers, entered transactions for those customers, applied a cash receipt against that, and then did some reporting off of that.